Okay, so now to finish off this red uh, argaric mushroom, the main one anyway, I'm going to take a little bit of the red and I'm going to mix in some of the white. So I come up with like a, a darker pink color and we're going to get, add about a little bit already, but just sort of like a pink shade. So what this will do is this will add sort of um, the areas where the light would be hitting the strongest on this little mushroom. So you can see I've gone in and sort of deepened underneath a little bit and around the edges, refine those a little bit more and add I'm just going to keep um, making this pink lighter and lighter by adding a little bit more white each time. So you can see this would be the area where the light would be hitting this mushroom the strongest. This part, the upper right, and a little bit down in this direction. If you get your brush a little bit wetter on this little round canvas, it'll kind of get down into the nooks and crannies on the canvas a little bit better. So you can see that really sort of adds a lot more brightness, a lot more highlight. And these mushrooms are very shiny when you see them outside, if you're lucky enough to come across one. Okay, I'm going to wash my brush out really well. And I'm going to go into just the white itself uh, to start the little bumps that these mushrooms have on them and what they do a lot of times uh, the mush the little spots they follow the shape of the mushroom when you look at them they go sort of around the mushroom themselves so however you add your little bumps remember that they don't go straight across the mushroom they follow the shape the C shape of that mushroom. You can add as many as you want. Each mushroom is different. Um, and there's also a little bit of, actually we'll go some white, but I want to use a little bit more yellow around this edge for the bumps. Uh, you can even break the plane of the top of the mushroom and I'll show you how to do that. You just kind of go back in with a little bit of the white and what we're going to do is we are going to go in and use um, a little bit of the burnt umber around these edges. And actually, we're going to use them around each of the bump, the bumps. Um, so to not, we don't want these to be perfect. They're sort of squarish in shape, um, but they're all different. So to make them realistic, we don't want them to be perfect. Sometimes I use the point edge of this uh, angle brush, and sometimes I use the flatter edge. All right, so I think that's good. So what I'm going to do is use my little bit, um, the round brush, pick up a little bit of the burnt umber, and I'm going to go around each of these shapes. And if you can see that, what that'll do is that'll add a little bit of depth. When you see these little bumps, there's dark brown. Sometimes there's black and the speckles all over these little shapes. But it adds some depth to each of the bumps. Now, to get, um, to, you know, have these that are outside of the mushroom show up, just add a little bit of the burnt umber around there. And if you're shaky, that's even better. If your hand is shaky, that actually is a benefit. So we don't want them to be perfect. We don't want them to be straight.
a little bit of shading underneath and around just sort of continue um, adding that burnt number around each of the bumps pushes them back into the background a little bit, makes them look a little bit more realistic. Getting there. And I'm gonna add what I did in my brush with my brushes. I went in and added a little tiny bit of yellow to this to the um, burnt umber. Like I said, these little bumps are not perfectly solid white. There's a little bit of shading around them. And then around the edges of these um, agaric mushrooms, there's always, when they're fully open like this, you can go around the very bottom edge and add some broken, I'm just kind of tapping, pulling, tapping, pulling. There's a little bit more of these bumps, and they're a little bit usually more solid around the edge. Again, if your hand is not straight or steady, it's actually a good thing. Sort of um, just jaggedy. Dot pull, dot pull. If you can see that. That's how I'm adding those shapes. Those, these on this side would not be quite as bright, so I'm going to pick up a little bit of the burnt number to make them look like they're in shadow a little bit more. <clears throat> I'm going to go back into the white itself, add the tiniest bit of yellow to it, and I'm going to come back in the top of these bumps. Just a little bit more white to the top. That was a little too bright. But this will just help to brighten those up a little bit. And the tops of these are really uneven and broken and bumpy. So we want them to have some dimension. So where the, that's where the layering of the colors comes in. And we'll give these a little bit more of a highlight. I love painting these mushrooms. They are so cute. And we don't want these to look too perfect, so we're going to bring the line up on these uh, little bumps around the edge a little bit more. And I really like that yellow, so I want to add a little bit more of the yellow and white around the edge. That changes that. Cute. Okay, now I'm going to start on the little guy. A little bit of burnt umber. Outline it a little bit. Add some shadow on the stem, under where the cap and the stem meet, bring it down the side, and I'm going to layer 
there's some of the white over the top. It's a little bit of the white and the yellow. And the newer little mushrooms as they're coming out, they don't have quite so much, you know, detail on them. So you can make them a little bit simpler. Picking up a little bit more of the burnt umber and adding in a little bit more shadow. Not too much to overdo it. And I'm going to go in back into the red with the white to bring up some highlight on this. This one actually is almost so ready. Oh, it's too much, so I'm going to add a little bit more red back in there. Get a little bit of highlight on that one. And I'm just kind of daubing that lighter pink on there. And I'm going to go in and add bumps on this. And same thing, they, they follow the shape of the mushroom around. They're not straight across. And there's usually a little line of these across the bottom. And I'm picking up some of the burnt umber so I can go in it's a very watery I have a lot more water on my brush to do sort of a glaze of the burnt umber to go around the bumps give them some dimension I'm going to grab another palette really quick and show you how I do some moss and grass underneath the mushrooms. So I'm just going to use a little bit of um, hooker's green. <clears throat> Excuse me. Some hooker's green. Whoops. And just do a really watery... Turn your pointed brush upside down and pull to make some grasses. But the water, excuse me, the more water you use on your brush, the more you can get sort of a glaze. I'm going to go into some of, um, oh, it's a medium olive green is what this is called. It's a little bit more of like a yellow green. So we want this to look like grasses and moss. So you can go up into the grass that you've already painted with the hooker's green. And I'm gonna use a little bit of uh, burnt umber underneath each mushroom and push into the canvas. So it looks a little bit more like a soil under the grass. You can see that. This gives a little bit more dimension and depth to 
to the grass you already put on there. Okay, so I'm gonna go into back into the um, olive green. Just keep adding. And uh, I'm picking up some medium olive green and some yellow so I can really get some bright color, bright greens. And I'm going to add in some white so it gets... When I'm doing these mosses and grasses under the mushrooms, they just I'm just kind of pushing, pulling, pushing, pulling, and again to get the grass upside down and pull. You can even come pull some grass down this direction. Okay. I just wanted to show you how quickly you can lay those mosses and grasses down at the base of the mushrooms. So simple and easy. I'm going to go back to the last mushroom here. I've got a little bit of burnt umber. Mixing it with some white and a little tiny bit of yellow to give it a little bit more dimension. Oh, picked up something in there. You want to deepen your edges, the shadow, pull down. Right. So I'm going to add a little bit more orange highlight to this side. 